Then I struggle. Um, Representative McGee. Thank you, Madam Chairman. You know, there's there's several things that we do in this building that really make you stop and put a pause on on your everyday life and which way you go and the decisions that you make and you know the committees that i sit on i call those the committees of your heartstrings um, because we hear all of the stories not only the stories of great successes but the stories of not being able to make ends meet or how we have driven somebody to live in their car because they can't afford to pay a rent of a simple $300 a month or to put food on their table. Um, I pause when we talk about altering the educational systems and the decisions that we make there, um, which is happening right in my own town. And you, you reference what it takes to live in your community at $19 an hour, which would still not draw people out of poverty. And that is possibly for one person, maybe not even a family. And you sit here and you listen to our debates and our colleagues on one side of the aisle or the other. And I really think that we need to step away. As I listen to Representative Buck Taylor about how things happen in this building, I think we need to step away from the Republican and Democrat concepts and really look at what the humanitarian concepts are in the state of Connecticut. And I, I struggle with... I don't struggle with the $15 an hour. I think that we battled this the other day. Um, I went out to lunch with a friend of mine whose daughter is the valedictorian of her senior class, and I asked her this very question. As a, as a senior in high school, do you think that it is right for people to get $15 an hour? And for an hour, we, we went back and forth as to the whys and the whys nots and the what ifs and the what if nots. And she said, maybe I don't deserve $15 an hour, but maybe somebody with a college degree deserves more than me. And we know that we sat here and listened to the gentleman that said degree should not matter. And I struggle with that. Because I, you know, and I said to him, does that mean that we don't tell people that they should continue their education, that we should just stop wherever we are and not try to better ourselves? Then I struggle with the, the small business and the fact that we do everything in our power to, to try to keep businesses here and keep people working. And, and obviously the, the unemployment rate and, and all of that is up for debate, depending on what report you look at or who you're listening to and what phone call you might answer at the time. I do not think that it is fair, with all due respect, that we give an extra dollar to the general fund for, for anything in that regard because we do have our own issues trying to figure out how to live within our means but at the same time the cost of living goes up our aging population is rising and the cost of health care is is not going anywhere but up as well I do sway on the side of a $15 an hour wage I, I struggle 150% with the dollar. And if we could change the bill now and say that we would eliminate the dollar and make it $15 an hour, the conversation, I think, might change. I'm not saying it would or it wouldn't. I will say this. I think it sends the wrong message if the people that are sitting out here or watching us on television feel that we don't understand where you are. That, that if you're a single mom and you're working two or three jobs, trying just to put food on the table, that $15 an hour in three jobs is not going to make it work. That's a shame that we live like that. It's a shame that we have people living in tents because they can't afford to live in a place called home with what we consider to be a traditional roof over their, over their head, or with running water, or heat. So I think as we, as we move forward, however this bill plays out, I commend you, Senator, for the, for the $15 an hour direction. I'm not saying we get everything perfect here. I, I'm saying that it's the right direction to go. I would love us to readdress the dollar.
I really, really would. I don't want to see us do the counter of our intentions and put people out of business. I don't want us to see Representative Wood's constituent son not be able to pay for college because he doesn't have a job at a sporting goods store. I don't want to see my daughter not be able to go to work to pay for college for next year. Or my 16-year-old son who's looking for a job that might not get one because we do something that prevents a business from being able to hire them. And those would be our franchises. We've deba debated this $15 an hour wage bill for quite some time, many years actually, to CNAs and home care and health care workers, to um, preschool teachers who are requiring to have a bachelor's degree. And I think that we are headed in the right direction with, with one single component that, that halts some of us. And as we know that we have the ability to change things moving forward, because it is the right thing to do for the people that are sitting in the room, I will support the $15 an hour getting out of this committee. I would love for us to move forward into changing that dollar. And if not, I cannot say that I can support it past here, but I would like us to see us move forward and to keep the conversation alive. Thank you, Madam Chair.